design for something uh, and then bring it to Walmart and please develop it for me. So there was a certain target audience for that. But before that, I mean in the late 19th century when uh, photography became really, really important, uh, there there's a case of a guy like a doctor from London and in a single house raid, they raided thousands and thousands of pornographic images in, uh, from his basement uh, because it was illegal back then. And it was just like five years after the first introduction uh, of the photographic camera to the public audience. So it's really pretty much right there. One of the first uh, films ever shot was kind of like a porno kind of thing. But we go on. I mean, in the 1970s, 1980s, when uh, the tape market grew bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, one of the reasons why the VHS tape became so important as the dominant form of videotaping, not the far superior Video 2000 format that was pretty much way, way, way better than VHS. One reason was uh, the porn market because they uh, tried, well, well, now I like license agreements and blah, 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 and it costs money. Let's choose VHS. Uh, we have many, 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 many things. Like my dad bought the VHS recorder and uh, player because he wanted to see porn. That's it, yeah? Uh, but you have to consider many, many people bought uh, video cameras too. And there's this nice little home video magazine from the 1980s, early 1980s, X-rated aesthetics. Videos, most libidinous tapes by uh, whoever Gary Giddens is. If he's here, please raise your hand. Uh, <laughs> so, pornography, sexuality, technology, and do it yourself were interconnected all the time. I mean, stuff like that, see you, see me, broadband internet, all that shit would not be there. There wouldn't be like a tone dial phone system uh, if, like, all the sex uh, telephone operators, like sex telephone call systems, blah, 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 in the 1980s. They couldn't handle all the callers, so they needed far superior systems. And that's why tone dial kind of was introduced. The same with broadband, etc., etc., etc. So the first Ars Electronica was dealing with the history of sex, porn, and technology, and how it's driving uh, innovation. Uh, but th it's not ending, of course. There is stuff like sex machines. We see one here. Uh, but also, you may uh, consider that uh, if you think that pornography is stimulating technological innovation, of course, we live in a patriarchal society, and of course, it's a heterosexist point of view, because main, mainly in the 70s, 60s, 80s, of course, the main consumers were men. They were actually longing for having cheap access to pornography, so they bought all the stuff. But in the meantime, there's actually an interesting thing happening, uh, because nowadays, uh, we see that fine, f more and more women actually uh, are also uh, getting into this whole thing. And it's interesting to see that the sex, uh, uh, the fucking machines market, many, many more uh, women are interested in, for example, building something like a, a sex machine or fucking machine uh, than just like 10 years ago. So there's something interesting happening. Uh, why uh, am I showing a guy, a good friend of mine, pumping fake sperm into a cocktail glass. We did it at the first Ars Electronica because we wanted a unit of technological innovation, a unit of pornographic technological innovation, and it's 72. Why is it 72? We took a random DVD store in uh, San Francisco and we counted uh, all the DVDs there. And then we kind of calculated um, hmm, how many DVDs, how many cum shots, how many liters of sperm are in a DVD store, and it's 72. <laughs> 72 liters of sperm in a standard DVD store. And I'm talking about DVDs here. I mean, could you imagine how much sperm is in the internet? <laughs> we would all drown! It would be the perfect apocalypse, like drowning in sperm, yeah? Uh, so, good. People like Mark Derry, who is a great cultural uh, philosopher, spoke at the first uh, Ars Electronica. So I'm not talking about only like bullshit going on about fake sperm and stuff like that. We had a couple of really interesting speakers there. He was actually talking about sex, technology, and war, and how that was interconnected. We had people like this sleazy guy, Rich Gibson, who was talking about GPS and sex. Uh, and we had Faxilla. Faxilla looks like who? 
Johnny Five! And Foxilla was built by the same guy who built Johnny Five. <laughs> the guy is now building sex machines and probably makes a living from that. That's pretty okay, I guess. Yeah? Uh, we had it on stage and I had a bet with a friend, $20, uh, not even in San Francisco, someone is going on stage and having sex with a machine and I lost. Uh, that <laughs> someone got up on stage and had a couple of female ejaculations on stage. Uh, there, in front of, sorry, I'm burping. I'm, that's actually fitting. Like, if I talk about female ejaculation, I burp all the time, sorry. Um, so, it was very interesting. Uh, after that, having many, many uh, talks about like third wave feminism and stuff like that, because it's quite interesting. I mentioned before, more and more women are actually into sex machines. Some women I know, and there's in an interesting study out there, says that some women would rather have, have sex with a sex machine than with a man, which is quite interesting because from a, femef from a feminist uh, point of view and third wave feminism, it's almost like uh, an interesting choice to make. So, I mean, in the meantime, I'm not, I'm not like, I don't have to choose a guy. Come on, they're sweaty and smelly, and why not doing some other things? And some hackerspaces out there actually have interesting small D DIY uh, workshops of building your own sex machines. It's pretty easy. The stuff is so steampunk, it's just like, <laughs> it's very easy. Uh, but then again, there is lots of technology in there that could be uh, like helping to uh, find new ways to do that. So, Pronovation uh, was the first theme of Ars Electronica, and in fact, if you're interested, you can buy that on Amazon or wherever else, uh, stupid capitalist companies. Uh, there is uh, a reader, an essay uh, reader, an anthology about all the talks given at the first Ars Electronica about Pronovation. I have one copy here with me. The second Ars Electronica was uh, Do Android Sleep with Electric Sheep? Because talking about the past and talking about sex machines and a possible future, it was almost clear to talk about sex and science fiction and technology. And what ideas are in science fiction that are interesting for uh, sex tech, uh, for sex tech future. Uh, in the year 1972, it was the first uh, science fiction reader ever presented, Eros in Orbit, uh, by Joseph Elder, uh, a collection of short stories about sex, science fiction short stories that specifically feature sex or pornography or erotica. Very interesting. But I mean, you're all nerds, most of you are male. Uh, what do we have out there? I mean, there's stuff like UFO from the early 1970s. There's like Gary Anderson uh, UFO series. I mean, it's quite hetero uh, sexist to see. I mean, why would someone like work in a moon base like this? I, I don't know, except like selling copies of, of the TV show, but I don't know. But let's go on. I mean, there's stuff like uh, Battlestar Galactica, and Battlestar Galactica, the new one, not the old one. The old one is pretty much like uh, Mormon indoctrination. You know that? Uh, the guy who created the first Battlestar Galactica created it because he wanted to have a science fiction story uh, storyline along Mormon uh, doctrine. So it's pretty much like a, it's based on Mormon uh, ideology, the first one, not the latter one. The latter one is pretty much like about screwing robots all the time, yeah. <laughs> screwing robots and ripping guys' eyes out. That, that's what it's all about. Uh, it's quite interesting to see and how they deal with this whole uh, philosophical dilemma of like we are, f we are fake, we are fake, we are not fake, we are human, we are not human, what do we do, how do we love, how do we have sex, it's quite interesting to see. Uh, 